order to silence your phones and give your name and affiliation before your questions. We'll start with Patrick uh, Murphy giving a statement, then we'll go to questions for the players, Ashley Prangy and Kinley Kahalen, and then uh, dismiss them and go to questions to Patrick. So Patrick, do you have an opening statement? Okay, I uh, appreciate it. Just, you know, they came up with some really big hits. Um, and I think the, one of the key stories was our opportunity in the first inning and we didn't cash in. First and third to no outs and three, four, five up to bat. And you, we have to get some run, something there. Because uh, it was a really good start and then it kind of deflated us. Um, but I was really glad we got 15 people in the game. They got some experience on this field. Um, some, good, some good highlights. Um, you know, Marley's pinch hit home run. And uh, Kahalen showed some guts and some grit getting that key hit with two outs that extended the game because we could have folded our tent right there and we fought some more. So uh, I, was, I was pleased with the fifth and sixth inning. Sure. Questions for players? Anybody? Second row left. Kenley, Tennessee College, Tide Illustrated. You had a great game, but I'm going to start off a little bit with the, the first inning. Just what – how much of a gut punch was that for y'all to, to strand those two runners uh, in, in the first? And how did you kind of, how were you able to rebound from that? Well, it was tough, but I knew that our team has grit and everybody believes in one another. So I knew we were going to come back at some point and score runs when we needed them. And so we just kept fighting. All right, we'll go third row left. Uh, Matthew Gibson, Bama Central. Ashley, three errors for you today. How do you bounce back if a tough game in the field like that? Um, I think just having full faith in my teammates because, you know, it is a game of failure and it's all about how you overcome on any given day in any play. Um, and it's really cool. Lauren came up to me and she's like, hey, you've had my back all year. I got your back. And I don't doubt her for a second. I don't doubt anyone else in that field for a second. So I'm super thankful to be here with these girls. And I know that we play our best when we're able to show how resilient and how gritty we truly are. Second row left. Nick Alvarez, AL.com, for both players. Like in the regional, in the super regional rounds, you guys had some winner go home situations. Kind of what about that and just the you know, adversity you guys have faced all year helped prepare you, prepare you for tomorrow night? Yeah, I think building off of the adversity we faced all year, it's, it's kind of been our team's story from day one, you know, coming out of the gate right away with the loss the first game of the season and just how well can we truly rely on each other and pick ourselves back up when we do get punched and how much harder can we hit back in those moments. And I think it's something that our team's taken a lot of pride in is really kind of just took um, – I guess, took pride in making it a staple of our, our team this year. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this team, like I said, has grit, and I just know that I believe in every one of my teammates, and I know that tomorrow we're going to come back fighting and getting ready for tomorrow's game. Sure. Third row left. <clears throat> Edwin Stanton, Bama Central. Actually, not the outcome you wanted today, but with some good moments with uh, Marley Giles getting her uh, home run and her first appearance in the College World Series. Just talk a little bit about that and how exciting it was for her. Yeah, as a fifth-year senior, to see her come through like that in such a cool moment, it meant everything. I remember just taking it all in with Coach Allie, and I was like, man, my heart could explode right now on the field, just seeing the joy and just seeing her come through like that. She's worked so hard day in and day out, and everyone here has faith in her like no other. So just seeing that all come together for her meant the world. Third row left again. Katie and Obama Central for both players. I think when I looked at the starting lineup today, Jenna's really the only one that had played in the World Series game before. So now do y'all kind of feel like – you've settled in and have been on the stage, it'll kind of help you moving forward through the rest of the tournament. Yeah, I'd say personally, um, kind of like I said last week, I'd never made it out of a regional before, so all of this has been kind of new and just something different to take in. And so, like I said earlier, I'm super, super excited and super grateful to be here with these girls. And like I always say, there's nowhere else in the world I'd rather be than right here. So. Yeah, I agree. It's very exciting, especially as a freshman, first year, and I'm very excited to see where this goes. Sure. This will be our last question for players, third row right. Hey, uh, Dave Wilson from ESPN.com. Um, one of the things I think a lot of new viewers to softball appreciate is the sort of excitement in the dugout, the traditions, the superstitions. What does that add to the game for you, like on a big stage like this? Does it sort of bring a sense of normalcy with you? And what, uh, what are your favorite ones? It does. I mean, our energy is very key when we're out there. I mean, we all know that. We've done that since day one. I mean, we have leaders in the dugout called the, what's it, the, wolf, pack. the wolf Pack. And so Jordan Stevens and Roy Giles are usually a part of that, and they lead us throughout all the cheers, and it's really fun. It keeps the energy going, the more motivating for all the people playing. Yeah, I think our team, too, thrives on momentum, and when we have the energy and are able to keep it, we kind of play our best and come together the best, I feel like. So it's super important to our game. makes the game a lot of fun. Thank you, Ashley and Kinley. Thank you, Thank guys. You all.
questions for Patrick. Second row left. Pat, Jayla came in and I think had only given up two runs over 30 innings in the NCAA tournament so yeah. far. Did you see anything different from her today uh, that maybe caused her to struggle? I'm not sure. I know I, the home run to the lefty was too good of a pitch. I watched the replay on the scoreboard, but other than that, um, I'm not sure because I thought her velocity was really good at the beginning of the game, and um, it was the two-out rally that killed us when we went up there as well. And in the SEC tournament, they had a huge rally with two outs, and you know, bases cleared two outs. It wasn't like two people on, and we got two outs. There was nobody on, so um, they got a thing going there with two outs. We just we need to stop the bleeding, and it happened to us up there in, in Fayetteville, and it kind of happened again today. But they got you know. The three-run home run, I think, uh, that was a big hit. Uh, the lefty, that might have been a two-run home run. You know, they got they got big hits with people on base. Front row left. Chase Goodbread, Tuscaloosa News. Coach, apart from the missed chance in the first inning, were you pleased with the offense, especially given how talented Tennessee's pitching is? Yeah, well, the you know, one of the uh, best stats was we only had two Ks, one by a starter, one by a pinch hitter. And when we uh, – faced Miss Rogers up there. I think we had eight or nine and only one against her this time. So I thought that was a big win. We were putting the ball in play. Um, but it comes back to that first inning again. Just anything there to score a run. And I think, you know, she might get a little tight. They might get a little tight. And it's a different story. Second row left. Nick Alvarez, L.com. A similar question to the players. You guys have had a lot of opportunities to kind of have like a win and go home conversation. Has that message changed for you this postseason, or like what do you, what do you tell the team before tomorrow night? Say that again. I'm sorry. Has the message changed in the kind of the winner go home scenarios with the regional and the super regional, and does that change for tomorrow? No, night? I you know afterwards, you know, the coaches said their thing, and then Montana said, "Look, we've been here before, twice, supers and regionals, because it was MTSU, it was winner go home, Northwestern winner go home, so we've been in this situation, so it's not a big deal." So it shouldn't be like this nervous, you know, it's, that's probably the way it has been written for this team, you know, to make it the hard way. So um, we have to play better defense. You know, we have to get a good start from a starter. And then obviously the, the third thing is the key hit. And we need to do that early. Sure. Third row left. So I thought, the, I thought our at-bats got better as it came along, you know. Uh, Matthew Gibson, Bama Central. Coach, uh, Kinley Kahalen had a big catch in the fifth inning, too, along with the two hits. Just talk about the poise and um, confidence you have in, with her as an 18-year-old freshman. Yeah, she, yeah, she should be probably graduating high school about this weekend in Hewitt Trustville. Um, she's very, very steady. She's not a emotional kid, as you could kind of tell. You know, very even-keeled. Um, doesn't get too high or too low. And for an 18-year-old, that's pretty, pretty good, especially for a hitter baseball, softball, the, the, the best hitters to me are the ones that, you know, they can go 0 for 7 and they know that they're due. Not that they're 0 for 7 and I stink. She knows that she's due. And, you know, that was a two out. I think it was two strikes as well. Uh, you know, that game was on the line and she comes through with an opposite field double over the left fielder's head. So she's got it in her. I think that was probably a really key hit for her, you know, for her future and Giles. That's what you want when you come here. You want a freshman to do well because then they want to they want to come back. Sure. Third row left. Katie with Nebama Central. Or if you talked about defense a little bit, but that two out rally started with an error just on a stage like the World Series, how much more important does defense and making those plays become? Huge. And you know, Christian White made a hell of an effort at that ball in center field, but she makes that play. You know, this this is the World Series. You just said that. This is the World Series. You cannot give somebody twenty seven outs in the game. You can't give them extra outs. No, uh, 24, sorry. It seemed double to me. Um, you just you can't give extra outs. And it's the margin of error is so slim. We've talked about this. You just have to play clean um, the whole time. Sure. Second to last right here on the left. Yeah, as the game progressed, did it become like the plan to save Montana for tomorrow? Yeah. And then is, was she, is she available? Like, what's her status? Yeah, yeah. yeah she was fine. It, but... To me, it's like either tied within a run or a lead. So I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but okay. today that would have been the deal. Last question right here. I was speaking with Kayla earlier today, and she says when playing for you, it's just you don't feel pressure in those big moments. How do you create that relationship with players to get them to be so comfortable in kind of those huge moments where they just feel like they're playing a game? You have to get them to realize 
and believe that it's person first, athlete second. Everything we do. So it doesn't matter if they go 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, I'm still going to love them. And they have to realize that. When they truly understand that I have their best interests at heart in all things, they're good to go. They're not worrying about if they fail. They're not worrying about if they strike out. They can look down to first base and third base, look at both Allison and myself, and say, they're good with me whatever I do here. I don't have to worry about them. And I'm hoping that that's how they feel because it's true. I also want to say thanks so much for all the Alabama media, for and you, and you, for being here, though. That's awesome. I'm, I'm really proud to be here with you guys, so thank you very much. And, Jill, I appreciate you representing the SEC as well. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>